So hey everybody on social media, I'm David here with Elijah Rising and we're just kind of doing this uh, impromptu. I have Bob Wicker here. Um, Bob has been a volunteer of Elijah Rising for, I don't know, a long time, but the, Lord's, the Lord has really um, placed a strong desire in his heart to continue to do interventions even when we don't even do interventions. So Bob's out on Bissonette every week. Um, and in fact, today even, um, he has a small team that's going to be out on Bissonette. And one of the big questions we've been getting is, you know, how has the quarantine, the COVID-19, you know, pandemic, how has that affected, you know, people who are still trapped in commercial sexual exploitation? And so, you know, Bob, just share a little bit about what you saw last week and what you anticipate to see tonight. Yeah, um, you know, unfortunately for the women who are working working the streets and, uh, you know, that job never ends for them. They're, they're out there all the time. They're out there regardless of what the weather is. They're out there regardless of what conditions are. Uh, I was out right before Hurricane Harvey after the incredible intense pouring rains were, were happening and there were women walking at that time. Um, and the, the same is true now. The women are out there walking. The women are out there working. Uh, from their perspective, nothing nothing has changed and nothing does change until you know they they have an opportunity for um, for someone to step into their lives and and hopefully bring change to them and explain to them what that looks like. So it's it's important that we're out there all the time. Um, and so we're not we're not stopping um, the effort to go reach the women on the street. Yeah, and so maybe just share a couple of testimonies. Um, that breakthroughs have been happening. Sure. So we had a couple last Friday. Uh, I went out there last Friday afternoon uh, once I left work, and there's a woman out there who uh, we used to talk to on a regular basis, but she got in trouble uh, by her pimp from talking to us. And so for a long time, she wouldn't talk to us at all. She would just walk by us almost like a soldier with her head straight forward and uh, obviously had strict orders to stop talking to us. And uh, so it was really hard to get breakthrough with her for a long time. Uh, when I was out there Friday afternoon, I, I saw, you know, first God put on my heart to make sure that she saw me. So as I was driving around, I, I made sure that she saw me. And uh, I went and parked in a parking lot where she walks up and down the edge of uh, and just really cried out to God and prayed for her for a long time. And I really felt like God wanted me to move closer. So I, I repositioned my vehicle closer to where she was walking. And, and I saw a couple of pimps leave the parking lot. So I believe one of those was hers. And I believe that was God um, because I just kept praying that she would walk over to my vehicle and just kept praying and kept praying. And her, her arc, her path of her walk went from straight up and down on the street where it normally is to, she was arcing in each time closer and closer to my vehicle as I was praying. And finally she walked right up to my window and I rolled down my window and I greeted her and, and she said, do you have any water? It's hot out. And, I, and I, I didn't, but I offered to go get her some and offered her food, but she said she wasn't hungry. Uh, but I went and got her some cold water. And when I came back, I got out of my truck and it was an opportunity to really speak to her and minister to her. And I just asked God what he wanted to say to her. And uh, and so it was the first opportunity in a long time to really have a conversation with her and remind her that we're here, remind her that there's a way out at all times and, and uh, speak life into her, um, which is the opposite of what they normally get. So yeah. that was wonderful. Uh, and then Friday night, I went out with a team and we had three people total and uh, we were actually able to uh, have a really meaningful conversation with a group of the of the pimps that was out there and they may sound odd to some people but you know look if the pimps get redeemed their women get set free right um, you know God loves them too and that's hard for some people to hear uh, yeah. but he really does and and it's our job to to minister to them as well and so we did and we had some real breakthrough and we had some really good conversation with one guy out there especially um, but in front of his group of peers, um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of funny because people are afraid of them because they, they rule with fear and intimidation. But, you know, when you understand what's really going on with them spiritually, you understand they're just scared little boys inside, you know. And uh, when, you, when you're bold with them, they become fearful. And it's, it's, it's strange to watch and kind of, you know, freeze up when we walk up in amongst them. Nobody ever does that, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and for them to hear the message that we don't hate you, we love you, you know, God loves you. He doesn't like what you're doing. He doesn't like your sin, but he loves you and he wants you to be redeemed. And he, you know, he, he wants you to, to understand 
understand there's so much more to life than how you're living it right now. That nobody ever tells them that. They don't ever hear that. And so just just hearing that opportunity, um, that invitation to them to, to come and meet Jesus and meet God is, is new to them. And um, it's, it's going to be life-changing for, for them at some point, without a doubt. Yeah. And I think just as we begin, the world begins to pause, you know, restaurants have been shut down. Small businesses have been closed. Everybody's trying to stay home. Um, strip clubs have been closed as well. And that's uh, uh, where a lot of women work, where they receive a lot of income. Most of these women have children, and, you know, so they're in a, this difficult spot of maybe, you know, they've never been out on the street, but now that their main form of work is no longer there, you know, this causes people um, to potentially do things that you know, they, they um, wouldn't have done given this circumstance. Absolutely. You know? you know, there are women, we see women get off the street because they get a job in a strip club, you know, and while we don't want them working in a strip club, you know, because it's still, it's still, you know, it's, it's still money for sex that's still selling your body, right? Um, it's a safer environment for some of those women. Well, some of those women are probably going to go back to the streets during this time. Some of those women who have gotten off the street are going to go back to the streets, you know, Um you know, I, I pray that this is an opportunity for them to me, to have a complete career change, you know. Yeah. Um, but in order for that to happen, there, there need to be employers who are willing to employ women who have a past, who have a criminal record, who have some drug and prostitution charges. And, you know, um, I, I really pray that this message would reach, you know, the heart of a, a Christian business person who, who maybe has the opportunity to, to bring some people in once they've gone through their trauma counseling, once they've processed through that and become redeemed and um, you know give them some long-term meaningful job train job training and job opportunities where they can really make a living you know uh, you, you can't replace a woman's income who's taking care of two or three children with a burger flipping job and expect them to survive that's not right. you know they're not they're not even going to take that opportunity yeah um, so that's something we pray about at times like this uh, but but yeah the, the need is uh, the need is greater to reach people um, but but where our volunteer teams that go into the strip clubs would normally go out and reach them in the strip clubs, they're not there right now. They're yeah. they're shut down. So um, so yeah, we as the body need to really pray into that. Yeah. So um, people are watching online live, and and you have a small team that's going to go out tonight. You know, how can we be covering you guys in prayer? You know, what are the times if people want to be praying tonight? Abs- yeah. Absolutely. You know, we we. Usually we, we meet and we pray before we go out, of course, because that's so important. But usually about 930, we're hitting the streets and we can stay out there sometimes until, you know, as late as 12 or one o'clock in the morning. Sometimes we don't stay out that long. Uh, it just depends on the circumstances and how many women are out there. And, you know, but but by all means, you know, if, if God puts it on your heart to pray for us this evening or any other Friday night, we're out there often, you know. So please do. We need all the prayer covering we can get. Yeah. Well, thank you, Bob, for um, spending time with us. We're grateful for people like you who have really given their lives to being out and helping those who are, you know, out on out on the street, you know. Well, thank you, David. You know, uh, I, I'm I'm out there because of Elijah Rising. I started in this ministry by just volunteering one time with Elijah Rising, and that's, you know, when God kind of kind of sucked me in and told me <laughs> this was my life's mission for now, for this season, right? And yeah. uh, I don't know what that looks like in the future, uh, but uh, y- you know, if Elijah Rising weren't here, um, a lot of these women you know, now in, in years past would never have had anyone reach reach out to them uh, and wouldn't know that God loves them and wouldn't know that there there is a way out. So yeah. um, I, I thank God for, for, you know, you and your wife and the entire staff at Elijah Rising, um, the, the, you know, the amazing things that God's done through this ministry, the Restoration Home. Um, it's a, it's an incredible ministry. I, I can, I can tell you folks out there that, uh, you know, if, if, you're if you're in a position where you can support a ministry financially elijah rising is absolutely positively all your money is going to help people that need help the most 
And, uh, you know, I, I, can, I can tell you that there's not one person on the staff of Elijah Rising that's living a life of luxury off of your donations, <laughs> you know. So these are people that are committed to, uh, to uh, you know, to doing this despite the fact that, uh, you know, that they're, uh, they, they have the skills to, to, you know, have very successful careers in the, in the real world, so to speak, you know. And they've, they've laid that down to do this ministry. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you.